All right, starting with game of the year. I've played all these except the Mario one. And I've got to be honest, although everyone's talking great things about it, and I'm sure it's great, it's still just more of Mario. I I could see why it's nominated, sure, but uh, out of all these, I feel like Baldur's Gate 3. Like, it's a shoe-in for me. Like, I liked Alan Wake... Resident Evil, Spider-Man, especially Zelda. But uh, Baldur's Gate 3, it not only was a fun game in general, like I have many, you know, different save slots for it. it it's just generally a good game that has opened the discussion of developers making better games in general. Best Game Direction, awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Mario... Again, I know I'm probably going to get the Mario fanboys coming after me, but uh, it's still just Mario. It's great, sure, but the d game direction is still the same. I feel like Alan Wake gets it a bit more based on what I've played so far. I haven't finished it, but that one sequence where you're going through the studio and it's just, you know, a musical number. It's both creepy and entertaining. So I'm gonna go with Alan Wake too. It's really stepping up in like the creative direction. Also, I'm trying to stop saying, you know, it's like one of my filler words that I despise. It comes up so much, you know, you know, you know. I used to make fun of like, it, like there was this character in Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts, whatever. And he would always say, you know, at the end of his sentence. That was low, you know? You're the only ones who would take it, you know? Cypher's not feeling so hot, you know? And I always thought, was, that's weird no one actually sounds like that and somehow i subconsciously adopted that little speech pattern into my speech best narrative okay so story-wise did not think alan wake will get two for me but it is what it is <gasps> lies of p best art direction oh my god <sighs> really like, I was gonna give it to Lies of P, but then Hi-Fi Rush is right there. I feel like it has to be Hi-Fi, even just from the cover alone, it's popping. Although, I I really like Lies of P. I, I hope I could give Lies of P one, one vote in at least one category, but it can't be Art Direction. It's gotta be Hi-Fi Rush. It really, it, it really deserves it. Best score in music. Now, normally I would give it to Hi-Fi Rush because the music is phenomenal but i'm kind of gonna go towards final fantasy because uh the final boss theme and many themes throughout this game really get stuck in your head and i feel like this deserves it for that best audio design so i'm assuming this is going to be like enemy noises, ambience, stuff like that. I want to give it to Hi-Fi Rush, but if we're talking about like in ambience wise, I feel like the horror genre does does it better. I, I have to give it to Dead Space. It has to be Dead Space. I mean, if it's not that I don't want to give Alan Wake a third vote. It's just I feel like Dead Space does it a bit better. Best performance. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest. I want to give it between Idris and Yuri. Like the others are good too, but Yuri's um, symbiote Spider-Man voice acting was top notch. Wow! I'm a Spider-Man fanboy. I think I'll just give it to Yuri. Okay, so this is basically yeah, like new ways of getting people to come into the game, and for me. Out of all this, it definitely has to be Street Fighter 6. Like, Mortal Kombat's great and whatnot. It's just Street Fighter 6 has that modern mode to help, like, complete rookies just, just jump into Street Fighter and actually enjoy the game. I had friends who have never played a fighting game pick up Street Fighter 6 and actually play against me and enjoy it. So I'm going with Street Fighter. Also, why does Luke in the cover looks like he's like hopped up on meth he, he looks nothing like that in the game he doesn't have the crazy eyes it's it's just that cover man it's such a weird cover game short impact i'm gonna be honest i've heard some of these games but the 
only one I've actually looked into was this one, Venba. I haven't played it yet, but it's on my wish list. So I think I'll give it to Venba. Is that some sort of dolphin angel harpy creature? Interesting. That's ongoing. Awarded to a game for outstanding development. Okay, so... Fortnite and Genshin Impact. As much as people like to meme about how, you know, weird and dumb it can be, they, they pull out content, like, routinely. Like, uh, the recent Fortnite one had, what, Peter Griffin being joined in, a muscular version of him, so... They're listening to their fans. Y you can't deny that. And then there's... Uh, Final Fantasy 14, which, if you remember when it first came out, that game was garbage. It was complete garbage, and they shut it down, worked on it, and then I think like a few years ago, they re-released it or reopened or whatever, and yeah, everyone started enjoying the game. So these three are good at that, but if we're talking about like, I guess, the most development I've seen in a year, I kind of want to give it to Cyberpunk, because not only do they update and fix the bugs with you know amazing uh, i guess i said you know again i will i will get this out of my system i i swear i will okay but what i'm saying is that cyberpunk dlc were based on what i've seen it, it's amazing and i would i can't wait to try that the base game i really enjoyed it especially with the patches and they're constantly listening and constantly improving, so I want to give it to Cyberpunk. It's just a shame it didn't start off like that when it was initially released. Why is Destiny 2 here? What, what community support? You, you pretty much... Destiny 2 does not listen to its community. The community is locked in a dark, damp closet for them. They're not listening, Jack, okay? If we're talking about, like, inclusive of social media activity, game up, like, No Man's Sky deserves it, Final Fantasy, Cyberpunk, Baldur's Gate, Destiny 2, no. I would put, like, Fortnite, Genshin Impact, heck, even Halo Infinite, which has been listening to people and changing things up. I would definitely not put Destiny 2 here. I want to go for this year and go for Baldur's Gate. Because Baldur's Gate has been listening, they they're still updating and adding new patches, changing stories, dialogues, fixing bugs. I respect that a lot. Uh, although Cyberpunk and these two deserve it as well. If we're talking this year, I would judge it between these two, and this comes out on top a bit more for me. Best indie game. So. When I did the Steam one, I had picked, I think, Dave the Diver, and turns out a controversy popped up that Dave the Diver shouldn't be counted as an indie game because it's it got a, it has a lot of uh, backing behind it financially, so it's not really fair to call it an indie game. I think I'll just give it to Dredge. Best debut indie game. Okay, so I want to give it to Dredge because that's the only game I played, but Pizza Tower. That stuff is everywhere. I I don't even know what the game is about. All I heard is like it's WarioWare, but it looks like it was made in like Microsoft Paint. And it, it, it just took the internet by storm. I see videos left and right being recommended to me. I'm like, what is this game? Uh, why is it so popular? So although I want to give it a dredge, I feel like best debut, the one that got like the most noise and most popularity, it has to be Pizza Tower. So best mobile game. I don't really play mobile games. For me, I think it's between these two. And um, Genshin Impact is big, so Honkai is probably big as well. I'm gonna give it to Hello Kitty, why not? It, 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 just let the underdogs win. <laughs> Best VR. I don't really play vr um but i heard good things about Red resident evil village very spooky with the vr mode and plus people really like giant tall vampire lady dominating over them so why not let's just keep going with that best action game okay um i don't think dead island 2 should be here uh i feel like lies of p should have been nominated for this high fi rush I, I like it, but compared to these two in the running, 
it, it has to be between these two. And I... I'm going to give it to Armored Core. Action and adventure uh, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving. Okay, hear me out. Alan Wake 2 has good puzzle solving, but I feel like the combat is so far from what I've done. I'm playing in a hard mode and it's not really a challenge. I, I think I had to put it between Resident Evil 4 and Tears of the Kingdom because their action and puzzle solving is good too. I'm going to give it to Resident Evil 4 because I I have multiple playability with this over this, which I've played only two times. This is like seven or eight times, so Resident Evil. Oh, Lies of P. I ah, uh, but it's best RPG, and Baldur's Gate 3 is right there, man. I can't really, in good consciousness, give it to Lies of P when Baldur's Gate 3 is there. Like, I, I love Lies of P massively. But if we're talking about like in RPG standards, Baldur's Gate has this beat. I don't know why Starfield is here. I really don't. Like, don't get me wrong, Starfield, again, is a fun game I like to play in the middle of the night when I'm editing a video on the side. It's good to like run around and empty planets and whatnot. But I wouldn't say it's the best RPG. Best fighting, hands down, Street Fighter 6. It's, I want to play Mortal Kombat one day. This one was actually pretty fun, uh, not gonna lie. I really like how they tuned it up. But Street Fighter VI has this on lock. Uh, it, it, it got a lot of my friends that never even picked up a Street Fighter game to actually enjoy it and have mains. So it's, it's definitely Street Fighter. Best family, Pikmin 4. I want to give it to Pikmin 4 because that was a, a game I didn't think I was gonna like so much, but it, it did. It, it came out of nowhere, sucker punched me with fun and entertainment. <sighs> but Mario Brother Wonder is here. And if we're being honest, best family game, I kind of had to give it to Mario Brothers because I did not play Pikmin 4 with family. I played it by myself. I became a dictator, harvesting Pikmin for my own tyrant desires. Uh, Mario Brothers. I remember playing the Wii U one with family, and I'm pretty sure Super Mario Brother Wonder is more of that. So I'm gonna give it to them. Best sim strategy. I have not played these three. I see Pikmin 4. I want to give it to Pikmin 4, without a doubt. If it was any other day, I would have given to Fire Emblem. But this Fire Emblem Engage, I only played like the first three chapters, and then Resident Evil 4 came out. I played that, and I forgot about this. That's, that's really sad because I'm a huge Fire Emblem fan and I want to finish this one day and make a video about it. But the characters are just generic. At least the ones I've seen in the first three chapters. Uh, maybe it'll definitely get better. Like the gameplay, I loved it a lot. The changes they've brought in. So that's great. But compared to Three Houses, like I, I was drawn in from the first chapter, you know? You know? You know? I'm... I, I'm Moving on. But Fire Emblem Three Houses, when it came out, it didn't just come out. It, it, it caused like a, a a splash. People were talking about in, in like social media. There were memes. The voice actors were getting involved. It, I remember for a good year at least, people were still talking about it. And with Engage, it came out. I don't see much memes or jokes about it. I don't see much discussion about it or the voice actors getting too involved with it. It's sad, it really is, because I really enjoyed the whole era of Fire Emblem Three Houses and the fun it brought with it. But for this, it's definitely gonna be Pikmin 4, because it deserves it, come on. Best sports, racing. Uh, Mario Kart should be here. Mario Kart is technically a racing game, I feel like that deserves it. Best multiplayer. I kinda wanna give it to Street Fighter VI, again. It, it has to be, because it got it, the multiplayer is fun, and my friends are constantly playing with me. But then again, Baldur's Gate 3 has that appeal as well. I just want to, I feel like, I, for me personally, it's been mostly Street Fighter 6. Best adaptation The Last of Us was really good. Super Mario Brothers movie, it, it was fun, fun for the whole family and whatnot. Twisted Metal was a surprise, but it, it really did a good job at adapting. Hear me out, okay? Hear me out. I'm gonna vote 
for Super Mario Brothers. I know, Last of Us is right there, yeah. But the thing is, when I think of an adaptation, I kind of wanted to flesh out more of the world and characters. Last of Us was a good adaptation, not saying it wasn't, but I like the Super Mario Brothers because they put a nice spin, uh, you know, and fleshed out the characters a bit more. It, it was filled with like Easter eggs and I thoroughly enjoyed it from start to finish. So I'm gonna have to give it to Super Mario Brothers, even though I've been dragging Mario through the dirt since the start of this video. I, I, I just want to say it was a good movie. Most anticipated game. Okay, so I'm actually anticipating all of these, but if we're going from, you know, one most anticipated five to least, Star Wars Outlaw would be five. I would say Hades two, four, then Tekken eight, three. Funny enough, I had the a beta access to, to Tekken 8. I was invited to go for the whole weekend playing it, saying I'm gonna get video content, make a video out of this. I catch a cold. The moment the the video, the servers go live for the beta and whatnot, uh, I catch a very nasty cold that lasts the entire weekend, or at least the last day of the weekend, and I'm like, oh, I could get up and record in the last hour. Now, the server closed way earlier than I thought I would. I got nothing. I waited longer for Final Fantasy, and I want to see the continuation of the story. I think I could wait a bit for Yakuza, but for Final Fantasy, I've been waiting longer, and I think that's my more anticipated. Content Creator of the Year. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know any of these. I'm guessing that's a VTuber commentary channel maybe, and then a bunch... Well, I think I know Quack City. I think I might have saw a video of theirs like years ago. I think I remember watching a video of... Yep, there it is. The Toontown Quack City game. I, I think I'll give them my vote just for a video I watched about them five years ago. <laughs> Best esports game. Okay, I think I'm going to... I'm not really the biggest in esports anymore. I used to be. Uh, but I think I'll go with League. Best esports athlete. Uh, the only one I really know is Faker. Uh, Ruler as well, but yeah, it's still League of Legends. I did not think League of Legends will come back and get votes for me, but here we are. I stopped playing it when I entered college. There was no way I could continue to play League and have a good grade, you know? <laughs> Best esports team. Am I really gonna give it back to League again? Yes, yes I am, because this is, the again, the only thing I know. Give me something else. Best esports coach. I swear to God, if it's League again, Valorant, Counter-Strike, Overwatch. That's interesting. Uh, I actually used to watch a lot of Overwatch esports, and Florida Mayhem was one of my favorite teams. But then again, League of Legends is here again. They got League of Legends got like three votes off of me. You're not taking any more from my life. I'm, I'm giving it to Overwatch, which was another part of my life that took time away from me. But it is what it is. <laughs> Best esports events. Evo 2023 was the game was the tournament that brought in a lot of my friends that had just been brought into street fighter 6 and they enjoyed it they loved every second of it and i heard like people who weren't even fighting game fans even attending so again it's got to be evo 2023 because that was hype and i think that's it is there any more nope that's the edge perfect yeah i guess you could let me know in the comments what were your votes or how things go for you anyways uh yeah that's all there is and i uh, hope to see you in the next one